Michael, I'm sure these numbers are, are dated at this point. Um, and if they're not, they will be soon. The NFL, uh, as of Wednesday morning, was up to 75 player positive tests over the past two days. Seven teams are in intensive protocols. I think I saw where it's 100 guys on the COVID list. Meanwhile, the NBA has 34 uh, players in health and safety protocols. Every time you look, there's another big name added to the COVID-19 list. Uh, the football team has a dozen guys. I think the Browns have 14 guys, including Baker Mayfield, although Saturday's game, as of now, is still on against the Raiders. We talked yesterday, Michael, about how COVID-19 is going to be the deciding factor in the outcome of this NFL season. Um, but I want to go back to something. And, and, and the NFLPA today, rightfully so, is telling the NFL that they told it so. That the NFL Players Association told the NFL so. And I'm going to piggyback off that and say I told you so. Not, not you per se, Michael Holly, but our audience, yeah. no matter... And I understand that people don't care. This will probably be the equivalent of a tree falling in the forest. You know, people may see this video and skip it. If they do, maybe it won't resonate. But I'll say it anyway. Um, remember we talked about Aaron Rodgers and all the hue and cry and gnashing of teeth about Aaron Rodgers being um, dishonest about his immunized versus vaccinated status. Right. And I came back after that and I said to you, and you encouraged me to, to, to you gave me the, you gave me the floor. He's like, no, break this down. That for all intents and purposes, if your goal is to prevent transmission of COVID-19 and he's in this new variant, uh, the Omicron variant, you're better off unvaccinated in the NFL than you are vaccinated. Because unvaccinated players are tested daily. Vaccinated players are tested weekly. So what we're seeing with these outbreaks is the result of not just players gathering for Thanksgiving or before that Halloween. We're talking about NFL players who can contract a, a, a variant of the virus that is much more transmissible, but less severe. Therefore, they can be asymptomatic and carry yeah. it for six days before they're tested if they're vaccinated. So carrying on as an unvaccinated player comes with it benefits that were designed to incentivize players to get vaccinated, but have backfired right. in the form of weekly tested for, testing for vaccinated players. And therefore guys can have it, carry it, spread it, not know it, and now you have an outbreak. So here's where we are, Michael, based on everything I know about this situation. We're at the point where instead of the NFL saying you, you're right, everybody should be tested daily instead of unvaccinated daily and vaccinated weekly. The NFL is like, how about we just get rid of testing altogether? They didn't go to daily testing because they didn't want to spend the $400 million they spent last year. Now the NFL and the teams are like, hey, we're in a playoff push here. We're missing players and we're trying to win games and get to the playoffs. And worse, Michael, as I understand it, the players themselves are like, wait a second. You told us to get vaccinated. We got vaccinated. In some cases, right. we got boosted. Now I got to miss a game because I tested positive. The players don't want it. The players don't want testing at this point. There, it's, you talked about this yesterday, Michael, societally, but specifically in the NFL, there is COVID fatigue. In this case, there's yep. protocol fatigue. There's testing fatigue. Where we are now, instead of trying to mitigate the spread by increased testing, the league is on the verge of throwing out the mitigations altogether and saying, let's just forget the testing and take our chances and the players are on board with this. So uh, the last thing I'll say before I pass it to you is 
The next time, you know how you know how they say when somebody says it's not about the money, it's really about the money. The next time right. somebody says that player safety is paramount, of course not. Remember, remember that they're lying. That's never what's most well, important. And I understand why the NFL PA would say I told you so. But I, I think we I think it's beyond I told you so. I, I think we're really beyond that. And, and everything you said, everything you laid out there is 100% 100% correct. It's factually correct. It makes sense. Uh, I get it. But I think it's really bigger than the NFL right now. This is happening. This is happening in the NFL. It's happening throughout uh, society. Uh, it, let's just focus on uh, North America or focus on the United States. It's happening to people who have taken extreme measures to protect themselves. It's happening to people who have gotten testing, who have gotten boosted, who are social distancing, who believe in science, who believe in masks. It's happening to people. So we're, we're getting another we're getting another surge and uh, I, I just think we're in a different place as a society Mike because before it was it was easy. It was easy to explain. Oh, you got it. Oh, you didn't get you're not vaccinated. Oh, um, you don't believe in masks. Oh, you were at a, a super spreader event. Of course. No, uh, it, it's not. It's not that simple now. So you're yeah. right. NFL could have done some things differently, but even if the, I, this is what I'm not comfortable saying. I'm not comfortable saying if the NFL like like uh, uh, Jake Treader is saying, hey, if they had done this, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have the situation. I don't know that. I don't know that I can't say that. Maybe it would have been easier. But I know that there are people getting COVID and they're like, how'd that happen? There are people testing positive for COVID and they don't even know why. Well, Michael, no, no, it, it's not. They were never going to prevent people from contracting COVID. They will prevent the spread of COVID. You wouldn't have okay, 100 guys on a COVID list. You wouldn't have 17 in intensive protocols if there was daily testing because you get the guy okay. who's got it before he can spread it over the course of seven days maybe. or six days. Maybe. No, there's maybe. no maybe about it. No, there's okay. no maybe about this, it. It's been okay. no, this is respectfully. Respectfully, it's been proved to it's work. Not don't say Once that. You don't got say that. It's not respectful. People say respectfully don't mean no, it. No, I mean it. Yeah, but but I'm talking to you though. No, no, but I'm talking to you. You know, you know, I mean that right, sincerely look. when I'm talking to you. It's not it's not no what disrespect, but here's a disrespect. I'm telling you what I yeah. know. And if they can isolate the person who has it daily, it prevents them from spreading it to who knows who over the course of a week, not to mention the guys who are running oh, around yeah. here fake vaccinated. Okay, right. Only if that's only true. This is why I say I don't know about that. What you just said is true. If the NFL were summer camp, this summer camp, we got everybody and all they do all in the bubbles? time is football. It, 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 in it, bubbles, but they're not in a the bubble. They're not in bubbles. Yeah. So yeah. I know what happens at the facility. I know who right. you're around. I know who's vaccinated, who's unvaccinated, but I told you that story and there are many stories like this. I told you that story uh, how I went to an event, a, a gala in Boston and everybody's yeah. wearing masks, and, but you don't know and people came up and you had to show your vaccination status right. on your phone right. or the card. Yeah, yeah, bruh. Stop. Stop. We don't know. You don't know who's around you and at times and at times what's even more dangerous and depends on what kind of family you're in. Let's say Thanksgiving. So you, you, you're having people over for Thanksgiving. Hey, hey this is mm -hmm. my family. It's all safe. Do you go around and especially if it's a, your family member brings somebody, let's say uh, daughter home from college brings her boyfriend, boyfriend, brings yeah, girl, you ain't, whatever you ain't kicking them out. Yeah, hey, <laughs> right. but maybe you're not even asking. Are you vaccinated? Yeah. When? Yeah. What'd you get? When did you got your card? <laughs> and, and so I understand what happens in NFL facilities, but life doesn't happen in NFL facilities. But, life which happens is why, outside Michael, of that. That's why you test. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't understand a disconnect here. If you test every day, you can find out if they actually have it. If you do want to know what, what I'm telling you is the players 
and the league at this point, they don't even want to know because it's costing them right. players and may cost them games. If you don't, you're right, and not to mention the fact that vaccinated players can do more away from the facility than vaccinated players can, at least according to the protocols. But when you come so in every day, I'm vaccinated players. Unvaccinated. unvaccinated I'm sorry. I always, I always mess that up. Yeah. I always mess yeah, that yeah. up. Thank you for catching that. A la Aaron Rodgers. You can't come into the building until you get cleared. And if you're not cleared, you're isolated before you can spread it. So all the things you're talking about are true. Now they get to go and spread it around for another six days before they're tested again. If they have vaccination vaccinated right. status. So the only way if you want to stop the spread is to test daily. My point is and my, my, my knowledge is that they don't want to stop the spread at this point. They just want to play football both players and teams. And so the protocol now is going to be either no testing or we're only testing symptomatic uh, vaccinated players or, you know, instead of testing people every uh, once a week like they're doing right. right now. Point being is everybody's exhausted. People are tired of talking about it, as you pointed out. That's it. People are tired of hearing that's about it. it. And the players in the NFL yep. are, and the NFL teams are no different. This is going in the opposite direction from where it should be going. If if mitigating, not prevention, mitigating the spread is the is the uh, is the objective. This is this is to use NFL language, and this is for the league and it's for the rest of us. We're going to have to make in-game adjustments to how we do business to to go forward and and. And it's not just NFL players. See, I don't want to pick on them. Hey, I don't want to be. I'm so tired. Of, we're all tired of it. We're all tired yeah. of it. I, I'm so sick. If I see somebody, uh, a, a meet, we had a meeting today, and I was saying, I better not see a Zoom link. Oh, I'm so tired of <laughs> Zoom. I'm so tired of Microsoft Teams. I'm so tired of COVID language. I'm tired of it all. Yeah. But it's necessary. And I think everybody's tired of it and you just want yeah. to get past and you want to turn a corner. But what, what we all have to do is is we're going to have to adjust and, and tweak and maybe not even tweak, but fundamentally alter some of our behaviors and some of our understanding of what it takes. And who knows? Maybe we go back to another shutdown. It may be like a shutdown or, or something similar to a shutdown before we get better. You may have to take a Good step back that. before we go forward. I know and nobody wants to hear it, right? Hey, thanks for watching brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.